Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining EAC's webinar today. This is Addison. I am the marketing specialist here at EAC. We will be recording the session today, so pending any technical difficulties, everyone will receive a replay of the webinar. Please feel free to drop any questions in the queue, and we will get to them after the presentation. Following the session today, a short survey will appear, so please stick around and answer these questions uh, for us after the webinar. Today, I'll start off with a short introduction of EAC, and then our technical account manager and CREO expert, Bill Schlund, will be diving into geometric tolerancing in CREO. Um, at EAC, our mission is to transform the way companies manufacture, design, connect to, and service their products. We are located all over the United States, and our headquarters are currently established in Minneapolis. We are more than just a value-added reseller for PTC, though. For over 20 years, we have helped companies innovate their product development processes. With experts in over 22 different areas of product development, we have helped organizations create better products, rethink what may seem impossible, and ultimately achieve results that make a lasting impact on the world as we know it today. Beyond helping organizations connect to the information they need, we also work with companies to connect their enterprises as well as specific focal points, which produce bits and pieces of their operational value. We also assist with design and engineering projects, host educational webinars, and PTC certified training courses. Aside from that, though, we have partnered with Form Labs, which allow us to offer our customers some of the latest and most affordable 3D printing options in the industry today. All in all, we know we want you to know that EAC is a company to get all the technology at the forefront of your business to help make your team successful. Our niche is helping you figure out where to start. Our specialty is having you to build what you already have. With that, I'm sure you've heard enough of me now. So I will go ahead and hand things over to Bill so we can all learn a little bit more about generative topology optimization um, in Creole. Thanks, Addison. Um, hello, everybody. I am Bill Schlund, and I will be talking to you about uh, geometric tolerancing. Um, I wanted to start off with a little bit of a history lesson. Ever since people were people, they've been trying to describe uh, the things that they saw, the things that they built, the things that they did. But as their designs and things got more and more sophisticated, they needed a better and more robust way of describing their designs their products to the outside world and as we saw here with the uh, da vinci the wright brothers uh, basically they're still doing things on paper or parchment uh, then we started using computers and we would make drawings with geometric tolerancing and things like that but still a lot of people still print it out on paper and <laughs> deliver it to the shop floor to customers that way i'm going to be talking about developing and creating these types of information. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do it using a 3D model, but I'm also going to still be using that in a 2D model. There's an advantage to doing things this way. Uh, not only can I have uh, basically what we would refer to as a model-based definition, but basically creating geometric tolerancing and notes and information on a 3D model, but we can leverage that in 2D. We can also send out that 3D model in uh, a different format, step format, and uh, still have these uh, annotations appear in the uh, step. So just a little bit, I guess, back on history again, not so far back at this time though, uh, just a little bit of the evolution of how uh, GTALs have changed um, over the last uh, few releases, mostly in supporting different types of standards, uh, increasing and making the user interface a little bit better. Uh, you'll hear this terminology, uh, semantic, uh, query or semantic um, definitions. And basically, that's just tying your geometric tolerance to uh, the corresponding surfaces or entities that they are referencing. So that when I pick on a GTEL, I can say, what does it reference? And it highlights that in my model. And then we've been continuing to modernize the interface. And then as of Creo 7, supporting a couple other uh, standards more fully uh, as far as these documentation. So let's, let's take a look at that. I'm going to go through a couple different examples here. Um, I have a part here. And um, what I'm going to do is go into annotations. And when we create annotations, in this case, we're creating 3D annotations. So some of you guys might remember back in the old days, we could do 3D notes back in Pro Engineer. 
Uh, this has kind of uh, evolved quite a bit since then. Now annotations go on a particular plane, are oriented a certain way. Uh, we name those annotations. As we can see, we have various ones here uh, defined. Um, if I wanted to, for instance, make an annotation, I'd say, let's create a new one. Let's put our notes and our dimensions maybe on the front plane. So as you can see here, when I put my mouse over the front plane, we're looking in the direction of the dark arrow and the text will be going in the direction of the red arrow. I could say, let's square this up. And now I can go in and uh, you know start creating uh, some, some dimensions, putting some uh, notes on there, uh, things like that. And again, they're all taking place on uh, the front plane. You'll notice down here as well, it's created a combination state. So uh, as we can see over here, um, we'll say, take a look at, oops, right here, different combination states. And we saw those as tabs across the bottom here. So what we wanna do is create a series of different views of our model with different information on those. So let's take a look at one of those views right now. Um, we'll take a look at this one. And I'm gonna go in and start uh, creating some annotations. So while I'm in the annotation tab, here is the ability after setting up the views, setting up that I'm creating a new annotation state, if you will, um, then I can go in and start showing or displaying or creating different types of geometric tolerances. So first one I'm gonna do is let's just create a geometric tolerance. I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna pick on the surface. And you'll notice that this is backwards right now, right? So it's using that front plane, which I used before. So what I'm gonna do is switch this to our bottom plane, All right? So now we can see that the orientation will be correct. And now if I place my geometric tolerance, and I come in down here, and we place this, we can see it, and we'll maybe place it right here. Once it's placed, it brings me into the feature tab for this geometric tolerance. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change this, and maybe change this to flatness. We can go in and change the uh, tolerance for that, maybe three thousandths. Um, <clears throat> And I could say at this point, I'm finished. Again, I can add other things. I could make it a compound tolerance, add additional text, uh, change the arrow styles, those type of things. Now that I have that placed, I can also go in and say, let's add a datum to this. I'll just lock it onto this, drag it down, place him, and now that's placed datum A for me. So this is my first geometric tolerance that I've made with this. Uh, one of the things I'm also gonna do is after I've added some things, um, I always like to go in and say update, but basically let's update the previous version, which was our model based definition 01. And let's just update it to, uh, to this, just to make sure that it's, uh, everything is up to date. So let's, uh, let's go in and make another look at this. Um, first of all, let's go in. And what I did before is I was creating a geometric tolerance. In this case, and let's change our view to the front. I'll say, let's show a dimension, and maybe for this guy. And this would be the dimension we want to see. I'll say, OK. And I can take him and move him up here. So we can see that we already have the tolerance turned on for this. And now I can say I want to add maybe a geometric tolerance to this particular dimension, when I place it, it places the last geometric tolerance I created, right? So with the flatness, and that's not what we really want for this particular one. So I could say, let's go in and change this to be perpendicular. You'll notice, as soon as I said perpendicular, it put an underline, a red slash through here, indicating it's spell checking. And it's saying perpendicular to what? I haven't said it's perpendicular to anything yet. So then I come in, I'll say, let's make it perpendicular to that datum A that I made earlier. As soon as I type in that A, it now goes in and automatically adds that uh, to this. Another thing I could do over here after our tolerance is I could say, let's add in something like uh, maximum material conditions after that. So I can include that there as well. And then again, I'm going to say, um, let's update that. So the thing that I wanted to touch on, let's go back to our first one that we made here. You notice as I go through these, you know, it snaps through, 
the different orientations that I have. Um, so you want to kind of name these with these tabs down here at the bottom, uh, something that makes sense. And we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, at the end of this presentation, some uh, tips that I want to give you. But first of all, if I have something like this, uh, as I've done right now, I've put it in a 3D model. Uh, I want to leverage this. I've already done the work. I want to use this in a drawing. So I'm going to come in and say, let's create a drawing. And we won't use a default template, but we'll say, let's use our model here. We'll go and place that. So now let's go in and we'll say, let's put in a general view. And I'm going to use that first annotation set that we made. I'm going to say, let's place that here. It brings it in in that orientation. And in this case, uh, usually drawings are orthogonal views. So I'm going to say, let's just kind of orient this. And um, we'll say the front can maybe be this face. And we'll say the bottom is this guy right here. And now when we say, OK, it brings in the dimensions that I've created. And I can go in here and maybe change the scale a little bit. But the work that I've done is, is still here, right? So now it's just kind of a question, maybe kind of cleaning these up, moving them around a little bit so that we can see uh, everything clear. But I haven't lost any work. And so that's what I meant by it's kind of an advantage to doing it in 3D is that I have this 3D representation and then I can easily leverage in it. It's sort of like saying show dimensions in a way because I'm saying kind of show the annotations. That's what that combination state uh, that I've created for this is doing. Um, let's go down, let's go back to our original guy here. Um, another thing that I might want to do is say, let's show dimension for this guy. And we'll say, let's use this. And say, grab this. We'll move them out here so we can see it a little bit better. So now the first thing I want to do is add some tolerances to this. So we could say maybe some plus minus tolerances. Um, let's go in and add a geometric tolerance to this guy. So we'll say, let's add a tolerance. Well, actually, one of the things that I should have done, I was on this guy. Let's go back to our front view. And I'll say, let's put in another datum. I'm just going to attach it to this because I want to reference this datum as well. So now we have datum B. And we go back here. Um, I'm going to say, let's put in a geometric tolerance like we've been doing before attach it to this guy. Again, in this case, it's using the last tolerance uh, setup that I had. I'm going to say, let's change this to position. We can keep this. We've got a, let's add in. It's also in reference to datum B. And with B as well, we could act, add uh, maybe maximum material conditions. So now that I have that placed, uh, something else that I might want to do is say, Maybe under here, this represents uh, maybe four surfaces. I could say, let's put it, yeah, we'll keep it at the back end. So I can add additional text to this as well. And we can see our representation this way. If I pick on this uh, geometric tolerance, I can go under references. And it doesn't have any references. This is what I was referring to before as semantic references. So I can go back and select that surface. In fact, I could select, um, hold my control button down and select all of these. You notice the nice thing about this is that when I do pick one surface of a hole, it grabs the other side as well. So I don't have to do double selections. But now I have this semantic reference. So if I pick on this geometric tolerance, I say, look at his references, it highlights those for me. So we want to do that when we're creating our geometric tolerances as well. So up until now, I've been um, creating different or showing different dimensions, I guess I should say. In this case, uh, let's go and create a dimension. So again, still working on uh, the front face. Let's uh, close this out, work on the front. In this case, I'll say, let's create a dimension. And I'm going to say, let's use surfaces. I'm going to mention between this surface and holding my control button down this surface. So this gives us our dimension as we would expect. I'll place them here. Um, you'll notice it's going between the centers. 
of both those holes. And I want it to really maybe dimension on the outside. So I can easily come over here and say, go to the either minimum, the inside of that uh, cylinder or to the outside. So I'm gonna do max on both of those. So now it's dimensioning to the outside. And then one of the other things I could do is add a prefix or a suffix to this. And I'm just gonna add reference. So now we've created our dimension this way. So not only can we display existing dimensions, again, the same icon we see in detail mode. Uh, we can create dimensions if we needed to do that. And then we have all the tools over here for creating notes. One of the things that's uh, fairly new in Creo is that if we do create a note and attach it to a surface or a datum of some sort, that can be its reference, its semantic reference. Before notes were just kind of there, but now if they do touch or have an arrow pointing at something, that can be its semantic reference and it would highlight uh, with that note. So we have this. One of the things that I mentioned before is we leverage this, first of all, in a drawing. I created this, you know, these different uh, geometric columns, and then I could place them on different views in a drawing. I can also use this uh, to send to a customer, uh, maybe in a more neutral type format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file. I'm going to say, let's save a copy. I'm going to save this uh, maybe to my desktop and we'll save it as a step file. I'm gonna say under options, let's save this as here, we'll say annotations, rich text. All right, so basically it's saying, send these annotations out along with the geometry. I'll just say, okay. Yeah, it's one out there, I'll just overwrite it. So if I close this guy out, I'll erase him out of memory, I'm gonna say, let's open on our desktop. We'll say all files. Here's our step file. I'll open that up. Let's read it in. You notice it brings in the geometry. It's a single import feature as we'd expect with a step file, but it's brought in the annotations as well. So you can see the annotations here as I pass over them. So those have been brought in, but in Creo and hopefully in the other systems that call this up, um, they'll have some type of an annotate mode where I can go back and see the different annotations I have. So this is all carried over in the step file that we sent out just by saying include the annotations. So again, we've done have the advantage of sending out more of a neutralish type format, still with the annotations attached. We can create a drawing with it, and then we also have it in Creo. Again, kind of heading you down the path towards hopefully someday drawingless models. So this is kind of the out of the box uh, way of creating 3D annotations. You could, I still could have done this, created these views in a detail in a drawing and then added the annotations that way. I just think there's more of an advantage to doing it in the 3D because then we can leverage it in several different ways and it's just not on a flat piece of paper. Um, let's close this guy out for a second. I'm gonna open up another part here. I wanna show you something else. So we've been creating the geometric tolerances um, kind of on the fly, show some dimensions, create some dimensions, geometric tolerances and so on. I'm gonna use an application that exists out here called gd and t Advisor. So this also will aid me in creating geometric tolerances. It does like the huge majority of the work for me. And uh, this is done by the same people that do geometric tolerances, right? The Sigmetrics guys. So I'm gonna say, Let's go into this application. Again, this isn't part of the core capabilities. This is another application you can get to add on to it. Um, several different things that we can do here. Really, we spend 90% of our time just picking on this first button, which is create the tolerances. We'll see the tolerances that we create here. If we have any issues, because it's gonna be constantly doing spell checking, um, we'll see those here. So it'll, right here, it says not all the surfaces um, are constrained or degrees of freedom are constrained and one or more surfaces aren't uh, selected. And that's because we haven't created anything yet. But I'm gonna say, let's create a geometric tolerance. And right away, I pick on the surface and it says, I'm using this surface as the reference. I'll say, okay, good. Then it brings me into the dashboard, very similar to what we saw before, but you'll notice I'm missing things. So it's not really wanting me to go forward. Basically the things highlighted in yellow, we have to put information in. So here it wants a tolerance for this. So I could say, let's make this maybe 30 thousandths. Once I type that in, you'll notice now 
I can have a green check mark, which means I can go forward with this and it says I'm automatically going to do this uh, given it datum A. And when I create that, it automatically creates the tolerance for me, adds the datum to it, and again, it's semantically tied to this particular surface. I can see that um, by hitting this button here. And we can see that the surfaces uh, that are being uh, defined or been used so far in our uh, geometric tolerance scheme, scheme that we're putting on here. So the next thing I want to do is let's go in and create some other ones. We'll kind of take a look at how the system helps me create uh, different geometric tolerances. So let's kind of zoom in on this guy. Again, I'm just saying let's put some tolerances, uh, geometric tolerances on this. I'm going to grab both the surfaces for him. It puts that up there. Um, I'm going to give geometric tolerance here, we'll say, you know, 0.05, 50 thousands. And then um, we could say maximum material conditions. I'll just say regardless of feature, and I'll say OK. So it puts that in. It automatically, I'll kind of move this guy over a little bit, automatically places this, and we can see that. Now I have a message down here. It says zero value tolerance is not allowed. So if I just single click on this, it highlights my 0.17, and I don't have any tolerance assigned to him at all, and it needs that. In fact, if I double click on this, it brings me exactly to why I don't want uh, to not have a tolerance here, and it explains it exactly according to, you know, ask me 1441 why this is. So the spell checker not only does that, but it brings you into um, exactly what we want to do. So with this, I can say, let's edit this. edit this guy. Oh. And if I select on them, uh, we'll just come over here to tolerances and say plus or minus. Now remember, we still have our error message here. Um, when I say I'm finished with that, I think we're going to have to do an update. Now it goes away. So kind of did a refresh on that, and now we can see that we have uh, that particular tolerance accurately represented. So let's go down here, kind of do the same thing. We'll pick on this guy, grabs both surfaces. I'll say, let's do that. Pick on him, kind of drag him out a little bit. Now I learned my lesson from the last one. right? So I do want to go in and um, specify a tolerance on this guy. So we'll say, let's make it and we'll say symmetric. And then again, we'll specify a tolerance here for the geometric tolerance. And we'll say maximum material conditions. Again, now we got the green check mark. I can say let's place that. And it adds that um, to our representation here. And then it also puts a datum C on here, representing this as a datum. So now we have a good start on this. Um, there's a message down here, DRF is not referenced. And basically what that means, I can double click on it, and it says it's not going to end the world if you don't have that. But what it can do is lead to confusion. Basically, I specified a datum out there, which was datum C, and it's not being used by anybody. It's just saying this is datum C. But there isn't any other tolerance that I have out here using that. And that's basically all that's saying. Right, so it's not red, it's not real bad. You can get by without it, but it could lead to some confusion. So let's go in and say, let's go in and make uh, maybe another geometric tolerance. And as you notice, using this particular module, it does a lot of the work for me. I'm only having to pick uh, geometric entities or features, and then it's automatically doing uh, the rest of the work for me, and then spell checking it as well. I'm going to take our 13 here. I'll kind of move him off to the side. And again, you know, we'll use uh, some tolerance on him as we remember. That's an issue. Um, put in a value here, the maximum material conditions there. Place that. One of the things you'll notice is that it knew it was part of a pattern. And that was one of the options in there. It says, you know, do you want to include the pattern on it? I do. So that's why it puts an 8x. 
in front of that. And then we can see the rest of it. And just like what we saw before, if I were to click on this, I could go in and um, I could add in down here, you know, that pattern is in maybe two places. And we'll put it maybe over on this side. So really now if we take a look at what we've created so far, um, it's at least we have it locked down, right? It's sort of like creating an assembly with, when we're doing geometric columns is we need to kind of constrain uh, the part with the different datums. And we have that, and now it's just saying there's more than one surface that isn't dimensioned. You know, I, I'm not gonna geometrically tolerance and uh, document every single surface on this part. So we can get by with that, but now we have that. And again, referencing um, what is being um, used by our geometric colleges. They're highlighting those in green, um, partially constrained ones. If I hadn't finished the definition of one of these, it would appear as yellow. Ones that haven't been touched, surfaces or features that haven't been touched are kind of a, a gray color. And then um, constrained by a surface profile in a note is uh, would be a blue uh, representation there. So now we've created uh, a different way of creating geometric tolerances. And again, I can still use these in a drawing, right? The same thing. It's just automatically doing a lot more of the work for me, automatically creating the datums associated with the surfaces and things like that. So one thing about doing this, um, you notice we'll have you know a couple different tabs on the bottom, maybe representing the different views or the different uh, amounts of information that are being displayed. One thing I wanted to leave you with uh, is, creating a start part for geometric tolerancing. So we noticed that we had different tabs. Well, you want that to be consistent. So every time someone calls up a model, um, those different tabs for the annotations all will have the same information on each particular tab called out. So here's an example of this. I'm not gonna read this all to you. This will be recorded, right? So you can go back and watch the movie and pause it at this point to read through the exact, er, the exact definitions of these different tabs. But basically, it's good to have an initial tab that just has the model in it, and then some uh, default information. This site map is pretty useful, where we'd have a series of notes describing what the other tabs information would be. You know, we have a tab for manufacturing, we have a tab for assembly, we have a tab for um, dimensions, things like that. And those notes can be hyperlinked to these other tabs. So this is sort of like the site map where I click on the note and it brings me to that particular tab, a good introduction to the tabs that follow behind it. So basically setting that up, we would set that up in a start part. We call it an annotation start part. And <clears throat> it would already have those tabs defined in it. Um, you know, they'd be empty obviously because we wouldn't have any geometry in there. But uh, it would have a lot of the notes and things that we would use already placed or, uh, you know, set out there so that we can leverage those. And the main thing is that it leads to consistency from part to part to part. So we always know exactly what to expect. Um, as far as setting up our geometric tolerances and where to find the ones uh, that we're looking for or that we need to create. So uh, with that, uh, that brings us to a close of our uh, geometric tolerancing, and I'm going to turn this back to Addison. Awesome, thank you, Bill. We do have a couple questions in the queue here. Um, not sure if you answered them yet, but one, it oh. says, can you use GD and T advisor on assemblies? It only works on parts. Okay. And then if you delete a hole from a part, will GD and T advisor automatically update? Ah, that's a good question. So let's, uh, let's go back here. We're in our part. Let's go back to GD and T here for a second, close out. Say delete. Um, highlighted, yeah, fine. The GD and T goes away. And then if we go into GD and T advisor, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be happy with it because it's just gone now. Uh, changes have been made. Okay, so it's letting us know to the CAD model. I'll say okay. Yep. Geometry reference is not valid. So um, you can kind of see that reference right there, uh, no longer a reference. So it does tell us that something was wrong. Initially, right when I first called it up, and then now again in the tree, it's showing me that those parts are gone. That's a good question. 
Um, I hadn't uh, hadn't tested that out before. Awesome, thanks, Bill. Um, I don't see any more questions in the queue here, um, but I do want to thank everyone for taking the time uh, to join us today. There are a few different things that we are currently offering you to help advance your processes during this time. For those of you who are new to this series, I do want to let you all know we're offering 50% off on these 16 extensions. Uh, this is a limited time offer, so I don't want you to miss out the ability to take advantage of this. Uh, it is a great time to add additional functionality and skills into your tool set. Um, if you're interested at all, feel free to reach out to me. And Bill, you can go to the next slide. Um, and then I would love to help get any questions that you guys need answered. Furthermore, for anyone looking to complete a project that requires an extra set of hands, or maybe if, if an additional skill set, we do offer engineering services. Our team of engineering experts can drastically reduce your time to market, solve the problems you've been facing, and help take you to the next level. If this is something you're interested in at all, reach out to me at atine at eacpds.com, and my email is right there if you want to write it down. Um, and I promise to help work in a sweet deal for you guys. Finally, we always do offer personalized and customized training. If you're looking to advance your entire team in a certain skill set or a certain set of engineers, or maybe just a few individuals, we can form a training class just for you. My goal is to really help you take advantage of these offers. In fact, for a limited time, if you reference the word CREO 2020, I will even make sure we bake in a deal for you with 20% off. I want everybody to save several hundred dollars while advancing their skills and learning the engineering tactics they need. If you'd like more information on this offer, or if you have any other questions, please also feel free to reach out to me about those too. Lastly, I'd like to mention, if there are several options that you're interested in taking advantage of, I'm more than willing to help your team put together a bundled discount. Then this next slide here, um, is a complete list of our CREO webinar series. The, this is where you can spool up in anything and everything you need to know, such as helpful hints, exclusive tips, and how to make the most out of your CREO design environment. Next week, we will be talking about augmented reality functionality in CREO. Um, and then to wrap things up this morning, another reminder, there will be a short survey that will appear once we end here. If you have a couple of minutes to spare, we would really appreciate if you could stick around and answer those questions for us. Thanks again, everyone. We hope you're able to join us next week and have a great rest of your day.